Hey you guys, uh, made some more progress with the remote control switching. Uh, first I got the uh, Sateki, I guess it's called, Bluetooth switch in. Uh, I like this one a lot better uh, so far, it's one of my favorite ones. And, and the Wemo, I like that one, but it's Wi-Fi. And I was thinking I didn't want to do Wi-Fi because of the ha always having to have a router on and whatnot, but um, I'm still experimenting with all the switches. And it's just wired up like this. This is the same power switch that's on the PIP. And you just can put it into the normally open or normally closed, depending on how you want to do it. You just got to figure out what's going to be on the least amount of time for what you're trying to do. And this is how I have it wired up right now. I just temporarily have them both wired up to this switch. And then I added this little on-off switch here so I can switch on and off one unit so it'll switch on and off both units or switch on and off just one unit and that's really all I need it to do so my original idea of having uh, you know one of these each mounted in here and be able to turn them off individually is not really needed it would be more efficient this way I think just running one up um, you know uh, adapter power adapter and I got a couple of power adapters I got I'm gonna have extra parts now these this came in first this only has normally open um, and I originally was gonna wire it kind of different but uh, I don't know uh, there's many ways to to wire it you just got to think about the most efficient way uh, for what your application is and uh, it's working great uh, we can go ahead and um, Get the computer going here. I'll show you a lot of what's going on. And then I'll, I'll go into the application here. And we'll switch on the, the pips. Hey, we just turned them on. And the light came on. Both lights came on. Both pips are on. And then you'll see here. Uh, adjust the camera. See on the screen there that shows the pips feeding, but it's not doing anything yet until we switch it to back to. See, I like this when I have them all on one controller, and then we got to switch from the grid to solar. And then that's done by Wi-Fi, that's pretty fast. And then now you'll see the load here. This light went off, and now it's feeding a 622 watt load. So that's what we got going on. And now to switch back. Now what's cool about this is, when we switch back to the grid, you'll see the grid come on. Grid light here, come on. And then uh, it's still feeding the inverter still on, so it's feeding a zero load now. Now we got to switch the inverters off. We'll go back to the switch, and we'll switch the inverters off. And watch what happens. You'll see the. Inverters are off now. Now, oh shit, inverters are off. Now, what will happen? You'll see the grid will start charging the batteries if you know that's how you have it set. And oh, it might not be on the right inverter. Yeah, it's this inverter. This inverter is not charging. That's one thing you can do when they're in parallel when you go into the tools uh, you can adjust each inverter to how much you want it to charge from the grid so uh, this inverter is set at zero or not to charge actually set to charge from solar only and then this one I have set to charge from the grid if there's no solar present so um, I can switch that to solar only and switch it off but I came up with a more efficient way here by just switching this switch off it cuts the power going to the the, the, uh, the pip so they won't power up at all 
so when it does the switch over it'll that it'll be the most efficient that way so that's kind of where we're at if you got any questions hit me up uh, I'll do another video uh, showing the switching on the bigger computer if I don't know if this is going to show up but if it doesn't I'll uh, I'll do that and uh, hope you all are doing well uh, this is working great I have it set on the timers to come on at uh, uh, the inverters come on at 6 a.m. and the grid switch over at 6.05 so I think that will help the inverters last rather than just getting hit with a load being able to sit at idle for five minutes and then the same thing when they switch off I have the grid come on and let the inverters sit on for an extra five minutes before they switch off so there's no cold hit or you know no load just I, I don't really know how inverters work that well but I think that may be kind of a good thing anyways peace y'all